Yo, what's up, people? It's in Pixelation back with another video, uh, video game walkthrough, and this time is the Genesis Mega Drive version of Ghouls and Ghosts. So here we go, level one. Now, in the beginning, th this part of the level, all we have to do is just keep an eye out for these guys, cause. They'll pop out of, out of everything, behind bushes, out of the ground, from the wall, behind the walls, everywhere. And make sure you open up those chests, even those that contain a wizard, because that means you'll get something good out of the next one. So yeah, keep an eye out for those guys, and for the vultures, and keep advancing till you get the, to this part where you, you get introduced to the first skull throwing plant. Also, the guillotines just time time them right so they don't touch you cuz even if you get touched by them while they're retracting back up it'll still count and it'll make you lose your armor or life if, if you're naked so yeah once past this part we get to the storm part with the storm devils or whatever they called now these guys they're pretty annoying what you have to do is move fast through this area because if you stay on too much for too long, they um, the storm devils they'll turn they'll get bigger, so it'll be harder to dodge them. Now these the plants that throw the skulls they're easy to deal with is the um, these tentacles that come out of the ground that freaking annoying. So as soon as you see them popping popping up, just try to deal with them or dodge them. Now I don't need to get this chest, but Actually, I do. Shit, the um, the knife, just like in previous Ghosts and Ghosts, Ghosts and Goblins games, the knife is a must-have. Basically, this weapon will get you to the like majority of the game anyway. So once you pick it up, don't let it go. Now, there's another chest over here to the left. What I'm gonna do is just try and get over there and show it to you. As I said, even if um, even if you have like me, like now I have the knife and the armor, I open up all the chests I come across just in case later on I might need an armor or something. Because the more chests you open up, the better chances you have to um, to get something good out of out of them later on. So yeah, just. Keep on going to the right and here you come across the first boss of the game. Now this guy, compared to the Sega Master System version, his head doesn't just fly off. Kinda just, he keeps it in, in his hand or something. So yeah, pretty easy. Especially if you have the knife. The knife does fair fair amount of damage anyway, so... And it shoots really fast, so you get to shoot like four or five daggers at a time, so definitely a weapon you must have. Now the second level, what you need to keep an eye out for is these flying rock turtles, just like the previous one. And if you notice, compared to the Master System version, this, this version doesn't have the levels divided into two different loading areas, you know? So basically, you, you will still get a checkpoint, though, even if you die. Like, if you get past the first, the, the first half of the level, and you die, you will still get a checkpoint. But there's no more loading periods between them. Here, just in like the, like in the Master System version, try not to get yourself to the bottom of the pit. Now, as you, as you've noticed. We don't have um, various armor upgrades just like the master version. Now this guy, this guy is, he can be a pain in the ass if you let him, but it's its an easy, you see, like, it's an easy way to trick him. As I said, compared to the master system version, you don't get the, the numerous armor upgrades like red armor, green armor, to get the golden armor, you just get 
normal armor and golden armor. Which, if you lose, if you, if you get touched once, you lose it, just like in Ghosts and Goblins, basically. And you don't get to choose your um, your magic anymore. Any like in the Master System version, like here every weapon has its own set magic that you can activate once you have the golden armor. That's how it works here. Now we're getting close to the second level. The second, the second level boss. Sorry, um, this guy can be a pain in the ass because he moves really fast compared to the Master System version. So what you gotta do is keep an eye out. She's not like me. And as a, once again with the dagger, he's pretty pretty easy to deal with. It's the later bosses that will cause a little bit of a problem. We'll, we'll get there. We'll talk about him once we get to them. Now the third level is the upschooling one now this one is way harder compared to the to the master system version because of the the amount of, of enemies you have to deal with and the fact that these guys with the swords that just hang on on the wall on this version once your platform reaches them they start crawling on the platform towards you so you can't just ignore them, you have to deal with them. While in the Master System version, you could just... If you didn't feel like killing them, you just could... Wait till the platform... Surpass them, you know? Now this area right here... Gives you less time than the Master System version. Which means you're gonna have to deal with these guys... Rather quick... To be able to get to the next part of it. Believe me when I tell you, this level, the third level, and the fifth level are the hardest levels in the game, basically. Especially this bit right here with the with the demon heads and the tongues. This can really take a toll on your mental mental health. I, I swear to God, I'm not lying. What you need to to, to pay attention to is these flying dragonflies or whatever. They are in time your jumps and not just jump when you have to get from a tongue to a platform don't jump make just time time it so that you kind of just fall onto it jumping will get you 90 percent of the times will get you dead now this boss uh gasuto i think the name is he is harder to deal with than the Sega Master System version. But, as I said, there's ways to, to trick him. Once he goes under the, the, the ground you're walking on, you can kind of like, by moving around, you can kind of like trick him to not just run you over, basically, you know? So basically what you have to do with this guy is just keep moving. Don't let, don't, don't linger in one spot for too long, he'll get you. Now the fourth level is not that hard, it's just basically, from my point of view, fourth level and the, the first and the fourth levels, they're the easiest levels in the game. Just, yeah, you're gonna have a massive amount of enemies coming at you at all times, like these guys, the the reapers that's what i call them these guys they come in crazy amounts so what you want to do is just make your way progress through the level and just don't stay in one spot for too long now those towers that spit that blue bubble at you they can be a little bit of a problem cuz Especially because of the jump mechanics, you might lose your um, your armor on a couple of them. But there's a fair amount of chests here, and with them, the chance to just get back your lost armor anyway. So nothing to it. If you have to get past one of those towers, and that means sacrificing an, uh, your armor, just 
do it. Don't don't worry too much about it. You get plenty of chances to to get your armor back. By the by the time you pass the second part of the level, you see like here. Now the second part of this level is a little bit tricky, but going through it a couple of times, it'll give you the chance to to kind of get used to the layout of the, of the things in there, and it'll kind of make it easier on you. See, like this this tower here, this just easy. Those worms that come out of the ground, like they easy to just. Ignore them now. This part, as I said, this can be a little bit tricky, not just because of the hands, but because in addition to the master system version, if like in certain areas you get some blue snakes, you see, like coming out of the ground, and sometimes they might come like this one. They might come out of the ground in a spot that you can't shoot at them, and they will take away your armor. But as I said, even here there's, there's plenty of ways to, to get your armor back. Just because you lost your armor doesn't mean you lost the level, so... And every level has two checkpoints anyway. Actually has three checkpoints if you want to count the beginning of it. <laughs> but you have the beginning of the level, you have the middle of the level, and then you have the boss. Once you get to the boss, that's another checkpoint. You don't have to go through the the second half of the level all over again just to get to the boss so once you get to the to the boss if you don't have an armor just basically Arthur is naked and you die just don't worry you you spawn back with armor this time every time you, you every time you die and you get revived let's, let's say that you get your armor back so no worries about it. Once you get to the boss, that's a checkpoint right there, you save. Now this guy is annoying as fuck, especially because of the those two invincible snakes that come out of his back. You just have to basically just run around and dodge him. The main trick is ab about him is you don't know what they, you can judge where they're coming out from, but you you like until they start moving, you don't know which direction they're gonna go. So they might as well just kind of run you over if if you're too close to the hole they come out from. So keep an eye out for those holes from which the um, the invisible snakes come out, of. and you'll be fine. Especially if you if you still have the knife, it's a pretty easy fight. I remember the master system version of this boss fight was longer and because of the, the massive amount of small little maggots that came out of the the boss's back yeah final level level five and this this level is gonna be a pain in the ass this is gonna take you this like this level right here I'm not kidding this this level made me break a, around five different controllers so I'm not even joking, I'm serious. If you have a particular bad day, don't fucking play this. Just leave it for another day. This will make your make you throw your console out the window. Trust me on this. This is this game is is that hard, especially on this level. But also, as I said, you still get the checkpoints, so once you get to the halfway through the level or at the boss fight you kind of saved but that will make things easier things easier because you have all the bosses in the game just basically have to fight all of them all over again a couple of times and that makes it a fucked up level like really fucked up like these red arrows or whatever red devils you get four of them and everybody knows how annoying as fuck they, these guys are and how hard they are to deal with Luckily, with patience, the main thing when you deal with them is patience. Like you can trick them to, to hover over you, make them easy targets. Now these guys, the goblins, that's what I call them, the ones that puke on you, 
they, they're really easy to deal with, nothing fancy about it. Now, we're getting close to the, to the checkpoint once we drop down there where the last goblin is. Basically, this is the checkpoint for this level. So we're getting close to that final boss fight. Now, what you want to do is just open that chest, let that wizard do his thing and keep on going up the ladder. You're going to get close to an old friend, Astaroth from Ghost and Goblins. Main, main thing with Astaroth and this second part of the level is rush. You need to rush all these bosses. You need to get up in their face and get rid of them real quick before they start doing damage to you. Because if you let them, they will fuck you over. They, they will. The game will find a way to to make make you jump into a projectile or something, make you lose your arm at least, you know. And if you get to the to the final boss, not actually the final boss, just the level boss. Beelzebub or whatever his name is without this magic armor if you get to him without this it's gonna be a long ass fight it's gonna be a long hard fight I swear to god what you need is you need this magic armor which is uh, from my point of view it's the only place where the magic armor actually matters in the game on top of this magic armor is useless from my point of view this is the only sole purpose for the magic armor is this fight because you need to get to him you need to pick up the lance over there and you have to deal with this guy with magic if you want to deal with him with your weapon that'll take a lot of time and you'll probably die <laughs> I gotta be blunt about it you, you probably die this guy takes a lot of hits and he's hard to dodge, especially when he turns into small fly. The, the flying things. So yep, this is it, the end of the game. Now, thing is, just like the Sega Master System version and even the original Ghosts and Goblins, when you finish the game first time, you need to go through it all over again. So what I'm gonna do is, just like with the other videos, I'm not gonna show you the same five levels all over again. I'm just gonna cut straight to the final the final boss fight the one you get to once you pick up the psycho blaster during your second playthrough so here it is Loki which is definitely fucking harder than the Sega Master System in the Sega Master System version all you have to do is just aim at his head and shoot and he'll die here you need to do a lot of dodging to make sure you don't get hit by those arrows he throws out of his hands and stuff once you do that you defeat the guy that's it the princess comes in actually a vulture brings the, the, the princess in and her soul returns to her and whatever everybody lives happily ever after blah 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 you know you wanna go to the strip club or some shit and that's about it you just defeated ghosts and goblins for the Sega Master not the Sega Master sorry the the Genesis or the Mega Drive depending on what part of the world you're in now personal opinion this game is fucked up this is this make you want to slap a neighbor kind of game trust me if you have any issues like if you have a pit, fucked up day or you have anger management issues don't fucking play this I swear to god me from this is my definitely my top 10 hardest games I've played in my life. It took me a fucking week just to get one clean run through of the game. That means 8 hours a fucking day just playing this shit. That's, that's too much. That's too much failure for anybody, you know. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys liked it. If you did, please subscribe and uh, don't forget to, to give a like and drop a com comment. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers right now. As I said, my channel is um, pretty fresh, pretty new. Um, started like 10 months ago. Thing is, went off the grid for around 8 months because I had to move house and stuff. But anyway, um, now I'm back doing them video walkthroughs again. What I need is 
I need to see people subscribing so if you guys really like this and you want to see more video walkthroughs of retro games I'll probably start doing um, classic video games and even modern video games walkthroughs just thing is as I said I just moved and a new, and a new apartment most of my shit is just fucked up it's just lying around I'm still decorating you know I'm just setting up my man cave my like that's that's the term 2016 term man cave everybody fucking using it so I'm gonna use it um, still setting up my my room game room man cave whatever you want to call it so as soon as I'm able to get some PlayStation 1 PlayStation 2 video game walkthroughs I'll get them done but what I need is I need you guys to subscribe to my channel if you liked it and as I said don't forget to, to give a thumbs up or a like or share with your friends I need as many people to know about the channel as possible as I said it's a fresh channel so yeah thanks guys see you on the next video